Um, so within the last two years or so, I would say, uh, this problem that I've written down uh, got pretty widespread throughout the internet. Um, and somebody would post it somewhere in a YouTube video or something and ask, what is this worth? And then somebody would say, well, clearly it's supposed to be this number. And then uh, maybe some people would agree, and eventually somebody else would say, no, no way, it's supposed to be this number. And the argument came down to, um, and, and this is what drives me crazy, um, or this is one of the things that drives me crazy about the, the way math is taught. The argument would break down to, this is how I was taught to do it. No, this is how I was taught to do it. Uh, and so therefore, that's how you're supposed to do it. That's the only way that it can be done because I was taught that way. Um, but the thing that I love about math, and I do love math, I'm a math geek, you'll find that out often this year, um, but the thing that I love about math is if I'm asking you a question in math, um, there may be a lot of different ways to get there, but the destination, the answer, is clear. There, There's only one answer, there's lots of different ways maybe to get there, there's only one answer uh, that is true. That is the answer to my question. Um, this this question, um, well, we'll talk about more specifically here in a minute. So instead of, of me ranting for, for too much longer, I'm going to have you click on this link. It's by a guy who has been doing this for longer, is a, a better at video making, and is smarter than I am, but uh, I, I, so I thought it would be uh, more beneficial for you to watch that. Um, he makes some really good points. I really like what he has to say. So click on that. Really do go and watch it and and think about it and and see what you um, what your opinions are based on what he says. Um, so watch that and and just come back. All right. Um, so hopefully you you did click on that. You didn't just sit there and wait for me to continue talking. Um, I'm going to have you click on this, and it's just going to go back to the same video, but at this particular uh, uh, minute marker, time marker, at 3 minutes and 10 seconds, he says something that uh, is really central to what I'm trying to say here. So go ahead and click on that and, and watch that again real quick. All right, so what he says there about um, basically turning people into robots, uh, that... Uh, computers need an order of operations because they need to be told exactly what to do at each step of the way. Um, humans uh, can understand the underlying, um, you know, pieces. We we understand that there are those operators, addition and and multiplication and division and subtraction and all those kinds of things. Um, and while I can take this problem and I can work it out this way, forty-eight divided by, well, 2 times when 9 plus 3 is 12, so 48 divided by 24, and I can get 2, or I can do 48 divided by 2 first, um, so that would be 9 plus 3, that would be 24, times, this would be 12, that would give you 288. Okay, so people would work this out, and they would, some would get 2, and some would get 288, and they would have this argument about uh, this is correct, or no, this is correct. And it basically came down to you have to but multiply these together first, or you have to uh, divide these first. And that's, mathematically, there's no reason why you should have to do one first or the other first. Uh, it's about just communicating to other human beings. What's clear, what's clearly being communicated is that I want you to add 9 and 3 before you do anything else. I'm grouping them together, just like you would group words together in a sentence to, to bring attention to them uh, as a little aside or, or whatever. You have these parentheses, uh, and I'm, I'm specifically putting them together because I want you to do these things here first. Um, but when it comes to the division and the multiplication it's kind of vague, and that is what I want you to learn. I want you, if you were given a problem like this, don't argue with people and say, it has to be this way, or it has to be that way, that way, because that argument is based on what I was told that you have to do. Um, the, 
the correct answer here should be just this is a poorly worded expression. Um, I, I, you know, the, you can write sentences that are confusing as well in English that the comma is in the wrong place or parentheses in, or in a weird place or uh, it can just be confusingly worded and this is confusingly worded. I don't know what you mean. I don't know what you want me to do first. Um, so I want you to think for yourself. I want you to um, ask questions. Um, I want you to, to state when things seem vague or ambiguous um, and ask for clarification. Um, of get away from saying, how do I just tell me how to do it? Just tell me how to do this problem and I'll do it that way. That's really not thinking for yourself. I want you to think for yourself. Um, and that that's, comes from somebody who didn't think for himself in his high school math classes. So uh, um, realize that it, it, but nobody told me to think for myself, really, to, in a math class especially. I was just told, do it this way, this is how you do it. Um, but I don't want to be that kind of math teacher. I don't want you to be that kind of math student. All that being said, um, this, let me try that again, this right here, the way in which this problem was approached, the order that was used, uh, is the way this book teaches it. And it's the way that I naturally would solve this problem. It's, it's the order that I would choose to do it in. Um, because, if we were to use that PEMDAS, uh, this would be... Uh, I like seeing it this way, because... It works for me. You may have seen this in an earlier class. Uh, this is, would be parentheses. parentheses. This would be exponents. This would be multiplication and division. Um, and it's, it's written this way because parentheses would be the absolute trump card. If I put things together with parentheses, I want you to do those first. If there's an exponent, I need to do that exponent first. Let me show you an example of that. Um, so there's 3 times 2 to the third. Well, there's multiplication and there's an exponent. Do I do 3 times 2 and then raise it to the third? Or do I raise something to the third and then multiply that answer by 3? Um, again, it's, it's not... Um, it's not because I'm teaching you this, it's just the, the really the only thing that makes sense. Um, this really is, is not ambiguous. It, the 3 is is with the 2. The 2 is being raised to the 3rd power. If I wanted the 3 to be raised to the 3rd power, I would need to group it together and raise that group to the 3rd power, but I'm not. I'm just raising the 2 to the 3rd power. Um, so to multiply the 3 and the 2 together, it just doesn't make sense mathematically. Um, so this would need to be done first. 2 to the 3rd is first. That's 8 times 3, and so this would be 24. Right? We don't really need PEMDAS. Um, this situation should not cause a whole lot of confusion, at least for not very long. Um, once you realize that I don't have any parentheses here, I clearly don't want this 3 to be associated with this 3. And I want this 3 raised to the 3rd. If I did, I could put a 3 here, or I could group these together. Um, so that's that's where exponents falls. It it, it comes next. Um, then multiplication and division. The reason they're written next to each other is because the way the book that we're using teaches it, and the way that I was taught to, is that we work multiplication and division um, with uh, equal respect. We just work them left to right. So if division comes first, we do division first. If multiplication were to come first, we do multiplication first. Uh, so that's how we're going to do it. So the way we would do it, we, we wouldn't do this because this multiplication came second. We would do the division first, then do this multiplication. Um, but hopefully you're seeing, you know, that's kind of arbitrary. We just decided to do that. We decided that division and multiplication should be treated equally and that we should work them left to right. Uh, and it's just not... There's no mathematical thing telling you it has to be that way, and there's not really a widely accepted um, way to do it every time by everybody in the world. Okay, so and this would be 
addition and subtraction. And we just do addition and subtraction from left to right. This one doesn't cause as much confusion because if I just say 3 minus 2 plus 5, I'm just really adding a bunch of numbers. 3 plus negative 2 plus 5. And, and now it doesn't matter. If I do 5 plus negative 2, uh, it's the same as if I did 3 plus negative 2 because addition is uh, associative. So um, that's the order of operations. Uh, pretty simply put, we'll do some some sample videos in the next or sample problems in the next video. But um, this order of operations just came out of you know I I like to make up stories about the history of math. I imagine uh, a math teacher and a math student. Uh, the teacher writes something down, thinking this makes sense. You know, maybe they wrote something down like this. This makes sense. Just do that, and then and then he. Th he thought or she thought, this is clear, what I want you to do. And the student did this. And the, this teacher says, no, see, what I wanted you to do was division first. So let me invent this PEMDAS thing to communicate what I want you to do. right? Um, but really, parentheses is, is clear enough. We understand what parentheses do. They group things together. Exponents, uh, it's, a, it's an operator that is is clear. Uh, I want you to raise something to a power, and I don't want you to multiply these numbers together. I want you to multiply, you know, two times two times two first, and then multiply by three. Um, and then multiplication and division. We are going to in this class decide to re treat them uh, equally and to just work them from left to right as the same with addition and subtraction. Just work it from left to right. If subtraction comes first, do it, then do addition, and then just work your way from left to right. Um, but that's just because we're deciding to do it that way. We're just agreeing that we're going to make that the order that we do things. So uh, I just want you to realize that and, and understand that that is sometimes what we do in math. We just decide that certain things are just going to be the way they are, that this is going to be the way we do things. Um, anyway, I'm sure you're plenty bored uh, with all that. What you really need if, if you want to know how to use the order of operations in the way that the book teaches uh, is some example problems, so I'll get on uh, making that video. Uh, if you listen to that whole thing, I think you're going to be a good math student, and I thank you for watching it.